The air we breathe, the water we drink, the soil that grows food for our families. These basic elements are essential to healthy, happy lives. America's corn growers think so too. Across the country, they're pitching in every day and doing the work to produce food and fuel that is healthy in a sustainable way. Go to ncga.com to learn more about how corn farmers grow a more sustainable future for us all. That's ncga.com. If you are thinking about snacking on anything other than tasty cake this summer, you are simply Miss Cakin. A melted milkshake? Miss Cake. Crumbly, sticky s'mores? Bigger Miss Cake. Or worst of all, you resort to baking? If it's not tasty cake, it's a Miss Cake. Because nothing satisfies like a perfectly sweet butterscotch crimpet. Or rich and creamy chocolate peanut butter candy cake. Tasty Cake. Accept no substitutes. Football represents something we are. Something we are. Football is like life. You gotta push. Fantasy football is about proving that you are better than your friends. Hold up. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Face-Off. I'm going to do what's best for the team. Where fantasy meets reality. Pure fantasy football nirvana. And now your host. Let the games begin. Anthony Servino and Michael Hoff. And what is going on, everybody? This is the FF Faceoff. I am your host, Anthony Servino. Follow me on Twitter at the Real NFL Guru. Follow the show at the FF Faceoff, and we can be found at all of the top social media and podcast platforms. And today, we are going to pivot away from fantasy football. This is a big weekend, fantasy football draft weekend, but this is also a big weekend for sports betting with college football kicking off. We have the NFL kicking off in, in just about six days. And with me today, I have Alex Monahan, the creator of OddsJam.com. And before I bring Alex in, I, I do want to say, like, I, I will get contacted by a lot of uh, people with new products and startups. And Alex's product is so, it's really captivated me. For the past, I would say, two days, I've been diving into his content and his tools. And we are going to be doing a lot of work with him here over at the FF Faceoff. But right now, here's Alex. Alex, what's going on? Tell everybody uh, who you are and what you do. Hey, my name is Alex. I'm, I'm one of the co-founders um, of Odds Jam. So sports betting software, right? Trying to give bettors a leg up. It's um, obviously sports betting. It's coming into Arizona. It's just launched in Wyoming. It's a really exciting time to be a sports better in the U.S. So uh, yeah, we really focus to, to make people money. I mean, pretty simple. And what is your model? Tell them exactly what Odds Jam does. Yeah, so my background, uh, just because it may be helpful, it's like, you know, we come from an analytical approach. So I worked on Wall Street. I was a quant. So very interested in just numbers in general. And what we do is we are an odds comparison site at the core. You know, if you're in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, whatever, you have 10, 15 plus sports books you can choose from. All these sports books, they set their lines for the most part completely independently. They do not want to have the same odds. If all sports books had the same odds, you wouldn't need, right, 15 of them um, like we have in the state of New Jersey. You would only need one. So sports books set different lines. So what we do is we show betters where they can get the best possible odds on a given wager whether that's money lines, props, whatever. Um, we have the fastest updating odds, real-time odds for player props, like player to hit a home run, you know, receiving yards, whatever, as well as main markets, money lines, everything. And yeah, our goal is pretty simple and we've been very successful just, you know, with the simple goal to make people money. Um, you know, we pitch something very simple. We make you money. So that's really our goal with Odd Jam. And, you know, you have something called uh, an arbitrage calculator. This has to be one of the most powerful and one of the most valuable tools I have ever seen. And I, I'm not, that's no fluff, people. I mean, uh, if you go to oddsjam.com and you can skim the site, you can go to their blog and there's a how-to uh, section of YouTube videos 
um, it's incredible. Uh, it's almost, and I, and I said this to Alex off air, it's almost too good to be true. For sure. 100%. 100%. I mean, there is literally, we're going to look back and be like, this was the craziest country to ever legalize sports betting. How many people want a piece of the pie? How many companies? How many sports books there are? So the way I try to tell people to think about it, and the way I always thought about it, is on sports books, you go to DraftKings, you're a sports better, you browse through all their odds. I mean, we're literally talking about 10,000 plus odds on every sports book at any given point in time. So let's say you're a sports better in New Jersey, you have DraftKings, FanDuel, BetMGM, whatever, add them up. Like that's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of odds on these sites at any given time. Um, it's very difficult, very difficult, impossible for sports books, you know, with their different models to keep all lines in sync with the rest of the market. So you have all these sports books running around trying to set their lines independently, trying to, you know, keep their odds in line with the rest of the market. But sometimes that doesn't work out. And there's, you know, extremely profitable betting opportunities on win bet, bet MGM. So that's arbitrage. That's middles in college football right? Or NFL middles are huge. Nothing's better than winning a middle. I mean, you know, positive expected value bets. Like there are tons of betting opportunities just because of the scale of the number of odds on these sports books at any given time in the number of sports books that betters have available to them in the U S like Arizona hasn't even launched yet. And they're queuing up like win bet draft Kings bar school, so many books, like so many options. And, you know, there are rare few betting opportunities where the sports book isn't making money off the better and like the better actually has a mathematical edge. Um, I think that's why I've always, you know, loved sports betting, why I've always loved trading, you know, why I worked on wall street is like, you know, you can actually win in this game. This isn't a slot wheel, right? This isn't slots. Like you can actually win in sports betting and that's mind boggling to some people. And usually most people don't win. Right. But like the people who are sharp enough, understand you know how sports betting works like you can actually win you can win a ton of money um at least for most people like not you know you're going to retire type of thing but i mean tens of thousands of dollars absolutely at least with the given you know current state of the u.s sports betting market how much um you know in sports betting in general but with the odds jam tools how much patience and discipline goes into this i mean 100 percent. like people we have a lot of users who will log onto the site and just be like, Hey, like, you know, why wasn't there, you know, a great betting opportunity right now? I mean, there will always be some, right. But the best betting opportunities, you never know when they're going to occur. People need to realize, I mean, if they're new to sports betting, this is like the stock market. I mean, literally just like the price of GameStop could go from a hundred dollars to $120 in two seconds. I mean, the price of the Nets, just imagine it. If they're minus 200, Kevin Durant gets injured, right? Like those odds are moving really quick. Is good betting opportunities don't last forever. You never know when big injuries are going to happen, when big line moves are going to happen, when a big sharp betting syndicate in Vegas is going to start hammering offshore books and drastically moving lines. You never know when lines are going to start to move and when the best betting opportunities are going to occur. But so like, Definitely patience is important. Um, absolutely. And just also, you know, being disciplined. I, I mean, I completely agree. Like if you're just betting random things based on your gut, based on whatever, like it's very hard to make money sports betting. If you're disciplined, you wait for mathematically profitable opportunities, right? Um, there's, there's a lot of money to be made and there are a lot of opportunities every day. Like Oddsjam has thousands of opportunities a day um just based on arbitrage making risk-free money between two sports books um and it's it's really just a matter of patience putting in the work to 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 make the money right like um and understanding how the sports betting market actually functions now what so you you're essentially trying to catch sports books or or bookmakers sleeping like if there's a a big change 100%. if somebody's injured it's all about how the book and how fast they react or don't react. And you're trying to get that line quick. So you need to be rapid fast in, in getting your picks in. Yeah, you don't have to be rapid fast. Look, some opportunities move faster than others. I mean, there are times I've, you know, grab, you know, teams after a big player injury and those, 
you know, I've gotten plus 300 odds when the market adjusts to plus 100 odds. It's something where the best opportunities unsurprisingly go, go the quickest, right? Um, you know, Patrick Mahomes is injured. That Chiefs line is going to move quick. If you're looking at the site and if you're moving quick, like you have the opportunity to get your bet down on bet Fred, bet MGM, whatever. Um, some opportunities stay around much longer, but unsurprisingly, the most profitable betting opportunities, the most profitable opportunities, always the best things like they don't last forever. Um, and it's very similar in sports betting. So you don't have to be like rocket speed, but I will say like being a trader, um, working as a trader, like understanding that things move and you have to be quick. It, it, it benefits people like knowing how to navigate these sites, being quick to, to react to great opportunities is what's going to net you the bets where you're getting in on the bucks, like, or, you know, right after Duran is injured, if the, if the bucks are playing the nets or whatever, like to get in on the best ones, being quick helps a lot, you know? Now I have in, in the past, uh, and, and it gets frustrating without tools like yours, uh, when you're trying to do this by yourself and, and you're trying to For do sure. it by hand, not only is it time consuming to shop the books and, and shop the lines, and we'll get into why it's important to have ample sports books at your disposal, but then you also have to calculate uh, to find the, the, return, the return of investment. Like the, your your tool at Odds Jam, it saves so much. Like I would say hours, and I don't think I'm exaggerating. Yeah, it saves a ton of time, and realistically, um, you're never going to be able to get actually good bets down. People don't realize you're never going to be able to get good bets down without software. Every professional sports better in the world is using a software, and they're looking at lines in a programmatic way. They're not just like scanning through DraftKings looking for bets and then stumble upon a gold mine. It doesn't happen, right? All the good people actually making money are are using profitable betting software because. You know, good lines don't last forever. If the Nationals pitcher gets in, gets injured and they put in some, like, terrible pitcher, you know, then you're not going to be able to get the Nationals, like, plus 150 odds if that's what they were for the next, like, 50 minutes, right? Like, that may move in two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. So um, we save people time, and most importantly, we make people money, and we enable them to get on, get in on actually good lines before the market moves, right? Like, our users are the ones who make money. And the rest of the sports betting market, I would say, largely does not. Um, it's my opinion. So now um, you emphasize here, and even um, you know, I, I do a lot of all, or all my betting content over at thegameday.com. Um, For sure. And, and almost all of my articles, and I, I'm not a mathematical savvy guy like you, but I always knew the importance of having, like, I, I have at least ten sports book. Uh, accounts and I have the apps on my phone and I'm ready to go on the computer. I always emphasize uh, in my tips uh, content to have multiple sports book at your disposal. 100%. What is the importance of that? I mean, so my opinion is a lot of people think sports betting is this rigged system against you and, and it's not. It's just most people don't put in any work to figure out what they can actually do to win. But I literally, I don't even live in New Jersey. And I s went to Hoboken with a friend just for like a week on vacation, right? Sports books have the most lucrative sign-up bonuses in the world. I believe Caesar Sportsbook right now gives you $5,000 in a risk-free bet to sign up. Everyone thinks it's too good to be true. It's not. They're giving away, you know, close to 5,000 bucks just for creating an account. Um, you know, sportsbook marketing, is extremely fierce in the state of New Jersey. You have like 15 plus sports books, right? Like these books are at crazy marketing wars. I mean, what we get offered to refer customers to sports books is close to $500 a pop for a sports better. Like this is a crazy marketing war because sports books believe that most betters aren't savvy. They're not going to make money and the sports book will make a thousand dollars plus off that given better. And they do. And that's what the numbers have shown. So they offer you, you know, sportsbook sign-up bonuses worth thousands of dollars. So the first reason to have multiple accounts is simply, you know, you get lucrative sign-up bonuses. Like who doesn't want a $5,000 risk-free bet? I mean, that's incredible. And if you understand the strategy behind it, you can maximize that to be worth basically $4,500 risk-free. Um, and, and, you know, other sports books are pretty similar. Nothing's as, as popular as, as Caesars, William Hill, after kind of the merger or whatever it's called. 
in there being extremely aggressive in terms of growth, which, you know, great for them, um, and yield some great betting opportunities for users. But the second reason is just like, like we said, sportsbooks have different odds. You never know when a great opportunity, a great promotion, whatever, is going to be on FoxBet. So if you don't have FoxBet, you're getting screwed. You never know when they're going to have great odds on a particular wager. So, I mean, these companies aren't stealing your money, right? Like DraftKings is a public freaking stock worth $20 mm. billion, right? Like, it's not like, you know, this is some sketchy Russian bookie. Like, you're going to yeah. get your money out of DraftKings. They're not stealing your money. This $20 billion, extremely regulated company. So I feel like a lot of people have that thought in their head, like, oh, what if I win and they just take my money? That's that's not a thing. It's not a thing for U.S. sports books. So, um, uh, yeah, I just think, like, making more accounts, more sign-up bonuses, more opportunities, more betting opportunities. Like, what more do you want? I mean, literally the state of New Jersey, if you're a sports better, I mean, you can make tens of thousands, tens and tens of thousands of dollars within your first month, largely due to these sign-up bonuses. And I know it sounds crazy. But if you put in a little bit of work to understand the math, how these bonuses work, all that, like it's it's a lot of money. But it's not an ATM machine, right? Like you should take some time to understand how all this works, how the math behind sports betting works. What does plus 100 mean yes. in terms of implied win probability, all of that, you know? Yeah, and, and you know, I, I, I've done sports betting, you know, uh, for a lot of my adult life. And since I've been writing content, I've been learning more and more. And now putting this mathematical spin on it, uh, just from the past couple of days uh, with you and, and, at, and at Odds Jam, is a whole nother understanding. And, and you have a Discord that's free, right? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of free. Like, we try to prevent, you know, people from coming in and promoting other companies. But I mean, we have a thousand plus of our, our customers in there. I would say they're some of the sharpest, most engaged sports bettors in the world. Sharing advice, tips like, look, you're in the state of New Jersey, you know as well as me. There are like freaking 15 sports books always offering promotions, bonuses, odds boosts. Like it's very hard as a, you know, if you have an actual job to like keep up with all of this. Like if mm. DraftKings is giving you, you know, it's some deposit bonus for the 4th of July, you don't want to be the guy who misses out. So it's just like a community of people who who I would say are, are pretty sharp and are looking to to actually like bet on sports and not just do these crazy parlays and lose a ton of money. Like they want to win, right? They actually want to win and have some understanding of probability, mathematics, odds, what they're actually betting on, line shopping. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great community. It's an absolutely great community. So you just, uh, you know, uh, we actually published one of your articles over at uh, sure. my site, FFFaceoff.com. Uh, why don't you tell the folks a little bit of a quick recap of that? Yeah, I mean, basically, like, get multiple sportsbook accounts. And, you know, just before you ever place a bet, like, everyone thinks they're smarter than the sportsbooks and their gut is right, right? Like, the Bengals are going to win week one. It's just like, look, like that's all great. You can have your own opinions on sports betting. No one's saying that you shouldn't, but like make sure you're getting at least the best possible odds. Yeah. If you're placing bets at plus 150 odds versus plus 130 odds, that adds up to a shit ton of money in the long run. So make sure you are getting the best possible odds on your wagers. Pretty simple concept. And like, you know, the more you add a mathematical, you know, angle to your sports betting game, the more money you're going to make pretty simple um i'm a firm believer in that look i worked on wall street like i've seen all types of people think they're going to beat the market and they don't unless they're mathematical and like it's very similar in sports betting um is basic concepts that people don't even take the time to learn are critical and to make money as a sports better at the very least you need to be line shopping knowing what the sharp bookmakers are all that type of stuff it's it's really important again if you actually want to make money if you're placing ten dollar, you know, bets on whatever the Ravens because you're in Maryland every weekend, like who cares? Like it's ten dollars. But if you're actually looking to bet and make money and maybe even a serious amount of money, like invest in your education a bit. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Invest in your education, but it's no different in sports betting if you actually want to make money. This time of year, and you touched on it a little bit, there's a lot of promotions and bonuses. And no matter 100%. what sports book you log into, whether it's college football weekend, uh, I know DraftKings has, um, what is the thing? Uh, uh, 
Hammer the over. Hammer the over. They have something for the Thursday night football. And this is almost every sports book I'm logging into right now. It's essentially free money. It it, it is free money. And again, they're in the fiercest marketing war of all time. And like odd jam customers are are pretty aware that, that that's the case and are aware of sports, you know, books are giving away free money. And a lot of people, a lot of people aren't. And again, I, it sounds too good to be true in hindsight, like someone will write a book like how I schemed sports books for this much money. And um, it's just a marketing war, right? Like at the end of the day, they have to offer tons of promotions, profitable, clearly, clearly profitable bets. I mean, I think DraftKings is like Tampa Bay. They're a seven point favorite against the Cowboys. And the bet is, will they lose by less than 73 points minus 110 odds? It's like, obviously, like, you know, so it's a free $50 or whatever the max bet is. Right. It's, it's insane, right? So, like, you know, people who, like, take the time to, to understand that, I mean, maybe for some people 50 bucks isn't a lot of money. But, I mean, for a lot of other people, like, clicking two buttons and placing a bet in two minutes for to get a free 50 bucks is pretty nice. And for DraftKings, it's great marketing, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of money to be made. And I'm sure as NFL ramps up, as Wyoming ramps up, as Arizona ramps up, uh, especially once we hit New York, like it, it's going to be more of the same, at least for the time being, right? In my research, I find that well, I, I think there's maybe two, but certainly I think it's Utah it might be the only state that might never legalize it. 100%. And that's there's something written into there. I, I think it, it, what I read was it was written to the, the, an anti gambling stance is written into their constitution or something. I just find that so odd. You can do DFS in Utah, but you can't yeah, wager true. on sports. Yeah, I mean, from just talking to people who are smart in the industry, I mean, sports betting will probably be in basically every state within the next five years. I mean, look, it's really hard to ignore the tax revenue. Maybe maybe 10 years to get some of the harder states. Who knows about Utah? But I mean, look, it, it's coming, right? People want it. The state wants it. And like, I mean, in my opinion, I completely understand gambling. Like I've spent time, I spent a lot of time, more than I probably should have in Vegas. Is like, you don't want people going broke gambling. And like, there are, um, you know, there are a lot of people who maybe, don't 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 have the background in mathematics to understand like what they're what they're actually doing with the slot machine and stuff like that. So I completely understand why, you know, gambling has a negative connotation in a lot of people's eyes, but but it's fun. Um, it creates a lot of tax revenue. And as long as people are somewhat educated about what they're doing, right, it, it should be something that again is fun and maybe lucrative for some people who take the time to learn and not lucrative for others who don't. And like that's probably what it will end up being. Now, another one of the more powerful tools that you feature over at oddsjam.com um, is the bet tracker. Um, and when you have multiple sports books, uh, it's hard to keep track of your uh, gains and losses, obviously. How important is it to keep a log uh, of your bets? I feel like that is something that a lot of people aren't doing, and, and, and they're putting their, themselves at a disadvantage. Yeah. I will say I've always tracked my bets ruthlessly. I mean, literally since I started betting. Um, well, you're a smart better. Well, I always track my bets because like, screw that. I don't want to lose money to these, you know, sports books. Screw that. Um, and it's really hard. Why sports books, you know, are able to be successful, right? Is it's very hard to determine if you're winning a bet 53% of the time and you're a professional sports better or you're winning 47% of the time and you're an ATM machine for the sports book who is very square, um, is, you know, people will lose a few bets and they'll be like, oh, bad beats, variance, I shouldn't have lost, you know, whatever. My guy got injured. They'll win a few bets. They'll think they're really smart. And they don't realize they're just a cash machine for the sports books. Is look, after you place 500 sports bets, your profit and loss, your P&L, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't lie. You're a winner. You're a loser. Right. And you'll always see the people, you know, who are winners, you know, are mathematical. So um, I would just say, like, it's important because it's very hard, especially if you have numerous sportsbook accounts to go back and think, OK, like this past month, how much money did I make or did I lose? And you need to be unbiased about that. Right. The odds jam bet tracker is 100 percent free on oddsjam.com. Anyone can sign up and use it. 
We track all sports books. We grade all your bets for you, even odds boosts. Like it's an incredible tool. And like realistically, if you can't even tell me for a fact how much money you've made sports betting, then like you're not a profitable sports better. And I truly believe that is you have to know your exact profit and loss. And if you don't, you're a loser and you're a net loser probably. It's essentially um, like running a business. Yeah, it's like running a business. It's like keeping – it's like – yeah, exactly. It's like accounting. It's like, oh, my God, on Wall Street, like my P&L was like live or die by. That's how, it, that's how they determine in the long run if you're good or not, right? Like it is no different <laughs> – you know, it's no different in sports betting, right? You have to know your winnings and losses. Otherwise, you don't actually know if you won or lost and you're trusting your gut. And everyone biases in their own favor, right? Like, oh, I'm a winner. It's like, are you really, though? Like, are you – really like what is your profit and loss on every sports book what is it summed up is that more or less than you thought you'll notice it's just human instinct right most people think they're better looking than they are yada 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 it's like it's no different in sports betting you know most people think they're more profitable than they are most people think they're smarter than they are right and, it, and it's no different in sports betting in terms of winnings and losses so tracking your bets ruthlessly it's one hundred percent free on odds, Sam, and being analytical about it is it's really important. Now, this is an NFL centric program. And, and you know, we talked earlier about how bookmakers they are going to react to injuries or any type of news. Obviously, quarterback is the is the most uh, most important position in the NFL. Does it, will a sports book to react to a kicker change? Because that field goal kicker, that could be a swing uh, of three to six points. And these lines aren't very, they're not huge lines. Sometimes you have a two and a half point line. And let's say Justin Tucker misses a game, one of the most accurate kickers in NFL history. Will we see a line swing uh, from a kicker? Yeah, I mean, luck, I don't know exactly. I mean, you will. I'm not sure the scale and how big it will be. Like, you know, sports sports betting, there's so many implications, right? You have to think about it. If Mahomes is out, it's not only like the money line is affected and the spread are affected. It's like the totals affected, right? Like, because the next quarterback probably won't be as good. But then, you know, receiving yards are affected. Maybe the Chiefs, you know, receivers are expected to have, you know, yes, less catching yards. Everything is affected on a player injury. You know, props, maybe the Chiefs are more likely to go for it on fourth down. Right. So like or, or whoever, if their kickers out. So like the market is very dynamic and one player out affects a lot of things. Of course, it depends how marginal it is or not. I mean, if you take some mediocre baseball player, you replace him with another right. mediocre baseball player. Maybe not much, maybe not that much changes. But like, you know, if a key kicker is out in, you know, mathematics shows that that kicker typically makes. 90% of their kicks, whatever, like, um, you know, and they have three field goals a game, and now it's some guy who's kicking the ball 70%, like maybe the totals will change, right? And maybe the the strategy of the team with that kicker changes. Um, it, it's a very fluid, efficient market, and a lot of sharp sports books like Pinnacle and Bookmaker price this very, very, you know, in a very market-efficient way. But other sports books don't. And that's why you get these opportunities to make profitable bets. It's not all sports books are pinnacle. Not all sports books are bookmaker, right? Um, let's go between let's talk about player props uh versus game props or or, or or the game lines. What is more profitable looking at player props or the actual game line, you know, the spread total of money line? So I mean player props, you have, I would say, more opportunity in general. Um, and the reason for that is lines can move big, right? Like if Durant is out, obviously the money line's moving big, but you have millions of eyes on, on the money line. Whereas like Kyrie points or like some other player who's replacing Durant, whatever, like may move massively. Like maybe if Durant's injured, Kyrie goes from, you know, you're expecting 28 points. It's over 28, under 28, minus 110, minus 110 to like over 35. I mean, who knows, right? Like. These moves can be big, um, whereas before maybe it's over 35 points was like plus 500, right? So if you could snag that before the market prices that Durant was entered. So I would say like player props, there's more opportunity, but like sports books, they don't allow unlimited betting sizes, right? Like I talk about limits, you know, on our Odd Jam YouTube yeah. channel. It's like 
sportsbooks, you know, this isn't. It, maybe some people think it's not fair. I think it's perfectly fair. Is they're not going to let you hammer their lines for like fifteen thousand dollars. Like it's not how the market works. They're just not, you know, capable of it. And they'll limit betters eventually who are net winners, which makes sports betting uh, impossible to do full time. And it's definitely not a lucrative thing to do full time. Um, you know, it's a lucrative side hustle, but like it's very hard to make an, a better full time income sustainably sports betting, which is why you don't see many people, you know, you, you don't, I mean, put it bluntly, you don't see smart people trying to do that career path right like i'm going to become a professional sports fighter doesn't happen right um so i would say like there's probably more opportunities and player props but you see more you're able to bet bigger typically on the main lines point spreads in nba nfl totals things like that middle uh middle wagers how difficult are, are, are they to hit not hard oh, oh how difficult to hit i, I thought how, how to find i mean people love middles especially when you can get a good one it depends right like middling 2.5 and 3.5 point spread if you can get that is incredible like how many games end with a team winning by three points a ton right whereas like middling like you know the 17 point spread and 18 point spread is a lot harder like you, you know what i mean like it's right. just a game of statistics um you know if you think about hockey if you're able to middle a total you know, by like a 1.5, whatever money line point spread, like, or puck line, that's huge. Whereas like in the NBA, if you're getting over 240 points under 240.5 points, that's a lot less likely to hit maybe. So it really depends on the wager. I mean, I've won middles. You don't expect to win middles, but they're fun and they can be extremely profitable. Um, if you know what you're looking for, you're just essentially usually taking two profitable bets jamming them together and um you know they're low risk and you can have big payouts so it's not something you should expect like you know how often is a is an nba game going to end with exactly 238 or right. 239 points whatever you middle but like it's fun because unlike arbitrage where you have zero risk and you just make risk-free money with a middle like you have the opportunity for a big 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 payout even though you don't have much risk on if any Looking ahead to week one, what are some of the uh, top games you're looking to wager? Um, I don't pick games to wager on. I don't even pick teams to wager on personally. Wow. I pick, no, I have no opinions from a qualitative standpoint. Um, I never have, and it's never benefited me. And um, yeah, so uh, like, like uh, I'll give you an example. Like if the Royals are – Playing the no, Marlins, th this is great right? information that I think everybody needs to hear. Yeah, like if the Royals are playing the Marlins tonight, I mean, sports betting, it's like no one knows the future, right? No one knows who's going to win that game. I mean, people can say things are a lock. They're not a lock, right? What makes sports betting fun is there's variance. Injuries happen. Crazy comebacks happen. Crazy underdogs win. No one knows the future. Is there is a price that you have to be willing to bet on both teams. Otherwise, you're not a sports better, in my opinion. Like, if tonight the Marlins are playing the Royals, there should be a price that you're willing to get the Marlins, even if you think the Royals are the better team. And if you really think, you know, the Marlins are going to win, there should still be a price where you're willing to get the Royals because there's some probability the Marlins win or, or the Royals win, and there has to be a price where you're willing to get either team. And I think that's a general principle I follow in sports betting, right? It's like, it's not about the specific team winning. It's about the numbers you're getting, right? I could find a price to buy the Jets versus the Chiefs week one. You give me plus 2,000, whatever, I'll do it, right? We saw the Jets beat, I forget who they beat. They were massive underdogs. I think against the Rams last season, like they won, right? Like there was a price yes. you should be willing to yeah. buy every team. Because if you're getting a team plus 900 odds or plus 1,900, plus 900, they only have to win 10% of the time or more for that bet to be mathematically profitable. If you're betting on a team that's minus 900, they have to win nine out of 10 times for that bet to actually pay off, mathematically speaking. You know, um, everything is contingent on the odds you're getting, right? Like everything. Um, so I would just say, like, a lot of people do, and I understand why they do. They have opinions about teams. Maybe you've lost a lot of money on the Red Sox and, like, screw it. Like, you don't want to bet on the Red Sox right. regardless of how good the odds are, which is sure, fine. 
everyone can bring their opinions to the table. Um, obviously, that is what makes markets efficient, is people having beliefs about particular, particular teams and placing those wagers. But like in general, I think most better should go into games with an open mind and look instead of like what team is going to win, like where is the value and where's the value mm. in the odds. And that's what I think is very valuable, valuable for sports betters. Yeah, like this is incredible because obviously, I, you know, I, 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 I write and I produce content um, on, on sports mm -hmm. betting and, and it's opinion based. It's educated guesses. And you are. Your stance on this gives me a whole new outlook on it. Uh, and I think it's it, it's incredible. It's valuable. And, and my listeners need to hear this and, and kind of maybe shift their, their thinking a little bit. This way we all become more profitable. And I'm not a math guy. Your tools over at Odds Jam, it, you don't have to be a mathematician no. to use it. We're a tool in the toolkit. Look, like, I freaking love to gamble. Like, I love having... $20,000 bet in a night and then watching the games and drinking beer. Like I do. Um, I like to gamble, but I want to make sure I'm not getting a freaking rip off price and I'm actually getting value odds where I believe I have a mathematical edge over the sports book. Um, so I would say like, you know, there's nothing more fun than like having tens of thousands of dollars bet on a Saturday on UFC fights, knowing that you got great odds and you have a mathematical edge and sitting back and watching the fights and, like, there's nothing worse than, you know, uh, yeah. So I would just say, like, it, we're a tool in the toolkit. I have a, you know, we're a tool in the toolkit. So even if you're a handicapper or whatever, like, you know, get the best odds, like, pretty simple concept and, like, look for value. I mean, that's kind of what we try to try to say at Odds Jam is we welcome all types of bettors. And, um, you know, some people are much more mathematical than others. Some people handicap who are users, some don't. And, like, Whatever your opinion is, like you can still find the tool valuable, at least in some sense, right? Um, we're gonna as we begin to wind down the show, uh, I'm gonna ask one more question. What is the most valuable tip you can give to my listeners? Patience. I would say, mm. um, I would say I've caught some crazy, crazy mispriced odds, and I've caught some crazy line moves, and like I don't like, right, like. If Giannis is injured and you get to the bet first, betting on the other team, of course, dependent on your bankroll, if you're betting $10 versus $1,000, the actual profit in dollars is very different. But I mean, you can get bets good by like 30% return on capital, right? So like if you're able to get a few thousand dollars down or even a few hundred, like, I mean, like there is not a single day that goes by in sports betting that I can't make a hundred bucks even just scraping by and I'm limited on most bookmaker accounts is there is a lot of value in patience, understanding the dynamics that sportsbook odds aren't static and you never know when a great opportunity is going to occur. The people who look at sports betting for 20 seconds a day and pick their bets, they'll never make money. They never will. End of story is like, this is a game of patience waiting for bookmakers to slip up and capitalizing on those value odds or waiting for injury news, weather news, whatever it is, and capitalizing on it, right? Like trade deadlines. I mean, there are all sorts of reasons sportsbook odds start to move. But uh, this was great, Alex. Thanks for coming on again. Alex Monahan, oddsjam.com. Um, and that's going to do it for today's show. Um, I might be back on over the weekend, uh, but next week we're going to start, uh, you know, in-season coverage here. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, we're going to talk bold predictions. We're going to talk NFL division predictions, Super Bowl predictions. And then later in a week, we're going to start breaking down uh, the week one slate from a sports betting, a DFS, and obviously a season-long fantasy football perspective. But thanks a lot for joining me today, Alex, everybody out there. Uh, thanks for listening. I encourage you to go to oddsjam.com, come to fffaceoff.com, check out Alex's article. There's links uh, directly to oddsjam from there. Uh, we're going to be working a lot, hopefully, with oddsjam moving forward. But uh, until next time, uh, have a safe and, and happy weekend, everybody. It's a new day, and it's coming at you fast. With Comcast Business, you'll have what you need to take on every twist and turn, like the flexibility to control multiple Wi-Fi networks from anywhere, a cybersecurity solution to help protect all your connected devices, and the power of the nation's largest gig speed network 
all supported by a dedicated team available 24-7. Every day in business is a big day. Comcast Business will keep you ready for what's next. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. It's been 20 years since 9-11, and with our busy lives and the relentless 24-hour news cycle, we're in danger of letting 9-11 fade away from our cultural memory. We won't let this happen. Iron Light Labs presents the 20 for 20 podcast, 20 heroic stories about 9-11 for the 20th anniversary. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also find us at 20for20podcast.com 